All of you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, it's great to see you here this morning. Do you remember when you were a kid and getting to this time of the year, it seemed like Christmas would never come. It was so long. We had Advent calendars in our house and I remember turning the pages every day and it's like, oh, that's only one day. Look how many more there are. And now that I'm older, time goes, it feels like, I can't believe it's the second Sunday of Advent already. Time is flying. I'm nowhere close to being ready for the rest of this month. But uh, whether we're, time is going slow or whether it's going fast, we celebrate the idea that Christ is coming back. He came the first time that, that Christmas that we celebrate and he's promised that he's going to come again and get all of his people. What a marvelous thing that is. We're going to sing our opening hymn in uh, verses 1, 2, 4, and 5, and we'll stand on verse 5.
I'd like to invite you to turn in your Lutheran service books to page 268, The Order of Holy Baptism. And I'd like to invite all of Iris's family to come and gather around. If there are any other children here today that would like to come up too, just so they can stand close to the font and see what's going on, they're all welcome. So just gather right around. That a girl. All right, Iris is being baptized today, and this is Rachel's baptismal dress. Is that what I heard you say? Isn't that wonderful? Praise the Lord. This will be a great day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dearly beloved, Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the last chapter of Mark, our Lord promises, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And the Apostle Peter has written, baptism now saves you. The Word of God also teaches that we are all conceived and born sinful and are under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. Doesn't seem possible, does it? But ask Mama. She was born in sin too, wasn't she? <laughs> we are all self-centered when we're born, as beautiful as she is. We would be lost forever until delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sin of the whole world, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. I ask you now to name this child. Iris Marlene, receive the sign of the cross, both upon the forehead and upon the breast, as a token that you have been redeemed by Christ the crucified. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, according to your strict judgment, you condemned the unbelieving world through the flood. Yet according to your great mercy, you preserved believing Noah and his family, eight souls in all. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his host in the Red Sea, yet led your people Israel through the water to dry ground, foreshadowing this washing of your holy baptism. Through the baptism in the Jordan of your beloved Son, O Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. We pray that you would behold Iris Marlene according to your boundless mercy and bless her with true faith by the Holy Spirit that through this saving flood, all sin in her, which she has inherited from Adam, and any that she herself may have committed since, would be drowned and die, and that she be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church, being separated from the multitude of unbelievers, and serving your name at all times with a fervent spirit and a joyful hope, so that with all believers in your promise, she would be declared worthy of eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, from ancient times, the church has observed the custom of appointing sponsors for baptismal candidates and catechumens. And in the Evangelical Lutheran Church, sponsors are asked to confess the faith that is professed in the Apostles' Creed and taught in the small catechism. They are, whenever possible, to witness the baptism of those they sponsor. And you're promising to pray for her, to support her in her ongoing instruction and nurture in the Christian faith, and to encourage her toward faithful reception of the Lord's Supper. You are at all times to be examples to her of the holy life of faith in Christ and love for the neighbor. So I ask you now, is it your intention to serve Iris as sponsors in the Christian faith? If so, then answer, yes, with the help of God. May God enable you both to will and to do this faithful and loving work, and with his grace to fulfill what we are unable to do. Hear the gospel according to St. Mark. They brought young children to Jesus that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The congregation may be seated. I now ask family and sponsors to answer on behalf of Iris. Do you renounce the devil? If so, then answer, yes, I renounce him. Yes, I renounce him. Do you renounce all his works? If so, then answer, yes, I renounce them. Yes, yes I, I renounce them. Do you renounce all his ways? If so, then answer, yes, I renounce them. Yes, I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father, almighty, maker of heaven and earth? If so, then answer, yes, I believe. Yes, yes I believe. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, descended into hell the third day, he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead, if so, then answer, yes, I believe. Yes, I believe. And do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting, if so, then answer, yes, I believe. Yes, I believe. All right, I'll have you bring her right over here. Maybe I'll let you hold my book. Is that all right? Yep. <laughs> and kids, you can take a look. Come in close. Look what's inside this shell. Do you see what's in there? That's water. That's right. Is that magic water? No, there's no such thing as magic water. It's just plain water. But Jesus said that when you put that water on little Iris and you say that she's baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that he makes her one of his own and welcomes her into his family. And if Jesus said it, then it's true, right? Even if it's just plain water. So watch how this happens. This is an amazing thing. Iris Marlene, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Look how good she was. Did you see that? <laughs> The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Spirit and forgiven you all your sins, may he strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. All right, I'll let you hold that again. And we'll put one of the, we'll put one of the sponsors to work. How about that? <laughs> Just lighting the candle from up at the off of the altar and then bring it back over here. Receive this burning light to show that you have received Christ, who is the light of the world. Live always in the light of Christ and be ever watchful for his coming, that you may meet him with joy and enter with him into the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which shall have no end. Let's see, who, which, who wants to blow the candle out? Me. Okay. <laughs> Good job. Nice. Very nicely done. In holy baptism, God the Father has made you a member of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir with us of all the treasures of heaven in the one holy Christian and apostolic church. So we receive you in Jesus' name as our sister in Christ, that together we hear his word, receive his gifts, and proclaim the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. We welcome you in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you graciously preserve and enlarge your family and have granted Iris Marlene the new birth and holy baptism and made her a member of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. 
We humbly implore you that as she now has become your child, you would keep her in this baptismal grace, that according to your good pleasure she may faithfully grow to lead a godly life to the praise and glory of your holy name, and finally with all your saints obtain the promised inheritance in heaven. Lord, we pray that she will grow up, that she will have a deep love for the word of God, that it would abide in her heart as she grows, that she'll love hearing Bible stories even from her childhood, that she'll know and understand the Bible well, and that it will redound in her life to a great love and faith in her Savior, Jesus Christ. Give her, Lord, an, an even and gentle temperament that she will be seen by all people as someone who is kind, merciful, compassionate, easy to work with, easy to get along with, but also, Lord, with a compelling ability to, to draw others to the things that are right and good and true. Help her bring blessing to her parents and to her sister and brothers, that they, Lord, will always see her in the best possible way, and that she will have your favor upon her life always. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. Amen. All right, we invite you. Thank you very much. Let's welcome them into the family of God, and then the congregation may stand. Please rise and we'll continue with our, our service of divine worship. We we'll speak together the words of Psalm 27 responsibly. I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits. And in it his word I if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We spend a moment of silent reflection both upon God's word and upon our own self-examination this morning. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, and we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence. given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called or ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.
Stir up our hearts, O Lord, to make ready the way of your only begotten Son, that by his coming we may rejoice in our eternal home through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament reading for today, the second Sunday in Advent, is from Isaiah chapter 40. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she is received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry, and I said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows on it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good news. Lift it up, fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, behold your God. Behold, the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. Behold, his reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead those that are with young. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 2 Peter chapter 3. But do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, and wishing that any should, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved, and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn. But according to his promise, we are waiting for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you are waiting for these, be diligent to be found by him without spot or blemish and at peace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Could you please rise for the verse and remain standing for the reading of the gospel. Alleluia. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. All flesh shall see the salvation of God. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I send my messenger before your face who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. John appeared, baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. 
Now John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated for the hymn. Please be seated. A, a, a quick trivia question. Which book of the Old Testament has the most to say about the coming and the birth of Jesus, more than any other Old Testament book? You get one guess. It is Isaiah. That's right. So I'd like to, again, uh, just share with you from the first few chapters in the Isaiah passage in chapter 40 that Nadine read. And you'll probably get more out of this short sermon today if you follow along with me and open back up to Isaiah chapter 40. He starts out there by saying, comfort, comfort my people, says your God. The promise of comfort coming forth from him. Now, I, I just love this, this passage as it's uh, a, a part of uh, Handel's Messiah. You know, in all the radio stations, instead of playing, you know, last Christmas I gave you my heart five times an hour till we're all sick of it. Wouldn't it be great if they'd play some of the songs from the first part of Handel's Messiah? I count four songs in Handel's Messiah that come out of just this Old Testament text that Nadine read this morning. They're, they're so marvelous. And it starts out by proclaiming comfort. 
But in order to understand why this promise of comfort is, is needed, you'd have to go back and read the last few chapters of Isaiah because it's there where the Lord is saying, because of Israel's, because of Judah's sins, God was going to send Babylon to her as punishment. She was going to be taken away into exile. It's a terrible, horrible episode in the history of Judah. But immediately after then, he makes this promise of comfort. Be comforted, even while you're going through all of that, because that is not the final end for all of you. Now, for us, when we think of comfort, we think of like uh, comfort food, like like uh, chop suey or something. Or you think of a comforter, the, the little blanket that you pull up to keep yourself warm. But this, uh, this Hebrew idea of comfort is a little broader than that. I heard one preacher say it this way, one theologian, and I, I think it's really uh, useful. Come fort. Come fort. It's like being in the fortress of God, being protected by God, being guarded by God, having the security and the safety of all the things that God has promised, knowing that you're within that. That's what he is promising to his people here. Verse 2, then he says, speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her. When I preached this to the sailors the other day, I told them, I said, you know, we have a shortage of men in this country, so be a manly man. But when you talk to your wife, Speak tenderly, because women need to, need to hear that. So he's, he's speaking tenderly to Jerusalem and crying to, did you catch that? He calls it her. Why? Because in both the Old Testament and the New Testament, there is this theme that emerges sometimes where it's as if God is the bridegroom and his covenant people, either Israel in the Old Testament or the church in the New Testament, they are his bride. And so he's speaking tenderly to her with the love that a husband should speak to his bride. And what the three things that he tells her, what are they? That her warfare is ended. Meaning that the warfare that she would have with Babylon, that would be over. But now here's the marvelous thing about the Bible. As you start to understand the Old Testament better and better, you realize that prophets don't, don't say this and they're referring to that. But rather that God does the things, he manifests the things that reflect his characteristics in his dealings with his people over the whole course of Israel. And so it's like a tapestry where things emerge again and again and again. So is her warfare ended because this is a prophecy having to do with the return from Babylon? Yes, it is. But you also see later on here that it's, a, it's connected to the an announcement of the coming of Christ, what John the Baptist would proclaim when Christ was coming. So is our warfare ended in Christ? Yes. And then it's also attached to the second coming of Christ because it talks about, I'll mention later on, where all flesh shall see the glory of God. When will all flesh see the glory of God? When he comes a second time. And so when you read this, I don't want you to sit there and say, well, that's very interesting, Pastor Oswald. Some nice history about Jerusalem and about Babylon. No, this is talking about you. Your warfare is ended. Your warfare against cancer, your warfare against brokenness, your warfare against loneliness, your warfare against your struggles of, with sin, all of your warfare too shall come to an end. That is Christ's promise here. Secondly, he says to her that, that, that her iniquity is pardoned meaning her sins have been forgiven. Your sins in Jesus Christ have been forgiven. Third, that she has received from the Lord's hand double from, for all her sins. Now that's a very tricky passage there. You can really get led astray. It almost sounds like she has received double punishment for all her sins. Her, 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 her warfare is over because she's been punished enough and that sounds kind of crazy, isn't it? They've sinned, and they deserve this much punishment. But God says, I'm going to give you double that amount of punishment. We know that can't be true, right? Because the New Testament tells us that no one is punished as much as they deserve. No one, let alone get double punishment. Also, it would be contradictory to the phrase we just read, where he said that her iniquity is pardoned. If her iniquity is pardoned, then how could it be that her, her, her time of warfare has ended because now she's been punished double. That's not what it is. What has she received double from the Lord's hand? 
for her sins, she's received double pardon. She's received double grace. She's received double kindness. She's received double of God's compassion. She has received comfort, comfort twice for all that she has suffered now and all that she has done. God's grace and his mercy to her is double. That's the kind of God that we have. And then in verse 3, we see a voice crying, In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. God is saying, guess what? I am building a super highway that is coming right to you. I am coming to you, and I'm going to deliver these gracious and wonderful things. Now, that passage about the voice crying in the wilderness, you may have noticed that I read that when I read the Gospel of Mark. It's quoted in Mark. It's also quoted in Matthew and Luke. Oh, and John, too. In other words, all four of the Gospels quote this verse from Isaiah with reference to the coming of whom? John the Baptist. That John the Baptist is this voice crying out in the wilderness to prepare the way of the Lord. Get the the road ready for this highway for God to come to you. And I want you to notice one little thing here. It's, it's, It's important, though. Did you see here how when he says prepare the way of the Lord, the word Lord there in your text is all in capital letters? Does anyone see that? Do you know why that is? In most English translations, including this one, whenever the word Lord is capitalized, It's because the word there in Hebrew is not just a common or generic word for Lord or God, but the proper name for God. Do you remember when Moses saw God up on uh, Mount Sinai and or speaking to him out of the burning bush? And Moses said to him, the people are going to want to know what your name is. You're sending me to to bring them deliverance, but, but who shall I say has sent me? And God says, I am that I am. Tell them that I am has sent you. I am is the word Yahweh. And so Yahweh becomes the proper name for God. So this is not just any old God. This is the God that was revealed to Moses, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And whose way was John the Baptist preparing when John the Baptist came? Jesus. Do you put two and two together there, brothers and sisters? So who then is Jesus? Jesus is the coming of Yahweh. In Jesus, we have the fullness of God. Jesus isn't like a little God. Jesus isn't like a semi-God. Jesus isn't partly God. In the coming of Jesus, we have Yahweh himself fully delivered to us in the person of Jesus. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Now, straight and crooked have the same connotations back in, in Isaiah's day as they do today. When someone is living a a straight and narrow life, that means they're living right. They're living what is good. When someone is living a crooked life, it means that they're debauched, they're immoral, they're doing what is wrong. And so when he's talking here about making the, the road straight and making the uneven places or in the King James translation, it would be the crooked places, make those, those straight. What is he talking about? He's talking about our lives, that our lives, in preparation for the coming of the Lord, we should do everything we can to make them as straight as possible, which means repenting from sin, turning away from sin. And lo and behold, guess what John the Baptist does when he comes? He preaches a, a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Isn't that marvelous? And we get to verse 5 then, and it says, The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. They would see his glory. Now here again, remember that tapestry I talked about? Who's going to see his glory? Why, the people of Judah, when they're returned from exile. But who else would see his glory? Why, the people who would be there at the birth of Christ. Do you remember when the angels appeared to the shepherds and it says, the glory of the Lord shone round about them? And then what did the shepherds do? They said, wow, that was really interesting. You should mark this day on your calendar. No, they went with haste to find Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger as it was told to them. It changed their lives. It changed the, the, the direction of everything that they did. But look at what else will happen. We read in... Uh, Second Peter, about the new heavens and the new earth, because this old earth is going to be burned up and destroyed by fire. And you jump forward to the book of Revelation and you discover that in the coming of the new heaven and the new earth, there's going to be no sun. 
So what we commonly think of as heaven or what we mean when we talk about heaven, the future kingdom of the new heaven and the new earth, there's no sun there. Why is there no sun? Because the glory of the Lord will provide all the light. There will never be darkness or night there. So the, the revelation of the glory of the Lord is talking not only about these people from Judah and the people who were there at the time of the birth of Jesus and the time of the death of Jesus, but it's talking about us. And it's talking about our future as well. We shall see that glory. And it's going to be so splendid, so marvelous. Remember when Moses was up on that Mount Sinai? And he said, I want to see your glory, Lord. And the Lord said, if you look at my face, you would die. But I will let you watch as I pass by. So he hides Moses in the cave. And he goes by. And so as God goes by, he sees the back of, of God going by. And just from seeing the back of God... What happens? His hair turns white, and his beard turns white, and his face starts to shine so that when he comes down the mountain, he has to put a veil over his face because the people can't even look at him. He, he's too blinding. That's the glory of the Lord. Now, we get very caught up in the glory of small things. The glory of my phone that can do all these cool things. The glory of my computer that gives me access to the whole world. The glory of a new car. I love that new car smell. All, all these great things. And I, I, I'm not saying you have to get rid of all of them. But don't let the baubles of this life and this society capture your heart and your passions. Reserve those for something so much greater, the glory of the Lord. Because all the rest of this is going to burn up. But the glory of the Lord, that will endure. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of God, that abides forever, brothers and sisters. Amen. You may remain seated for, for the prayers. O oh Lord, we recognize how you sent your prophets and you sent your spokesmen to remind us how important it is to straighten our lives out, to have straight paths, not because we can fix our own problems, for we need you to redeem us and save us. But as part of our repentance, we want, Lord, to live lives that are pleasing to you. Draw us away from the bondage of sin. Take us away from the things that would enslave us and bind us and grant us the freedom and the liberty to be children of yours. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we recognize too that in the latter days that men will become lovers of self. Do not allow us, O oh Lord, to be lovers of self. Grant to us that we would be lovers of you. Grant to us, O oh Lord, that our, our hearts would be trusting Help us, O oh Lord, to realize the things that will fade and burn up like grass and flowers and to contrast them with the things that will endure forever. And help us that our passions and our loves and our desires will be directed and guided to those things that will endure forever. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, we recognize that the time will come when these bodies also, which are transitory and do not endure, when they will give way and all of your people will receive celestial, eternal bodies like unto Christ. And in the meantime, O oh Lord, we pray for signs and evidences of Christ among us to be manifested by, by healing, strength, and recovery among those of us who are suffering. We think, Lord, of Pearl as she suffered a a stroke, and is at home now for our other shut-ins, for Carolyn and for Jean. We pray for those battling cancer, Lord, for Doris, for Susan's mom, Kay, for John's dad, Al, for Lena. Lord, we, we remember before you Ron and Chuck, Arlene. We pray for Amanda. Pray for continued recovery for Wayne. We lift up before you our brother Stan. We thank you, Lord, for the successful surgery he had this week. We pray, Lord, for our brother Marv. We think before you, Lord, of Mario and Gary, and also Ed in the nursing home who's making such slow progress and wants to go home so badly. We pray, Lord, also for Lee and for 
for Donna. Lord, all those that we name to you also in our hearts who are in need for Paul uh, Tretton after successful surgery this week for him as well as he makes a recovery and everyone else who is in need. Hear our cries, Lord. Hear our intercessions. Intervene in their lives with that which they need the most, that not only would they see in their bodies strengthening and the things that would allow them to accomplish what you have assigned to them on this earth, but that they would see with the eyes of their hearts the truth of the promises of Christ and that they would be encouraged. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we thank you this day for the precious and wondrous gift of baptism delivered to little Iris. Oh, what a beautiful picture to see her eyes looking up tenderly and gently at her mother's face as the words were spoken over her. And we praise you that you have made her one of your own. And we ask your blessings upon her and upon her family. Always speak to them, Lord, as you have spoken to Jerusalem. Comfort, comfort and speak tenderly to them so that they will know your promises and the gentleness of your kind face to them in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. These, Lord, and all other things for which we should pray, we ask that you would give us endurance and patience to intercede constantly, that we will never let our our prayers wander off but that you would call us and summon us through the Holy Spirit to speak to you about all these things and that you would above all give us faith and confidence to know that you hear us and that you use our prayers mightily to accomplish your will and purposes in this world. Keep us safely in your arms and gather us one day with all of your people in those new heaven, in that new heaven and new earth where your righteousness will dwell forever. Amen. We will now receive your offerings. Unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, whose way John the Baptist prepared, proclaiming him the promised Messiah, the very Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world and calling sinners to repentance that they might be found by him without spot or blemish and at peace when he comes again in glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and singing.
bread, which he was in the tray, and took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup when he had supped, and after he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you and for many for the remission of all of your sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes.
Savior Jesus Christ, given unto death for the forgiveness of all your sins. Take and eat, this is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, given unto death for the forgiveness of all your sins. Take and eat, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, for you to death for the forgiveness of Body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen you and preserve you unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in steadfast love sent your only begotten Son into this world of sin, we thank you that for his sake you look upon us without spot or blemish and at peace. We praise you for the lasting home you give us as we trust in you. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I wait in the Lord, for the Lord my soul waits. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated for the closing hymn.
glad that you could be here today or watching with us on the live stream that we could worship our Lord together. May his grace and peace be with you and abide in your homes all of this week. If you have a chance on the way out, um, come and, and welcome Iris into the, fam into the church family and I think you'll get a blessing if you do that. Just say welcome Iris and you'll feel good about that. Um, the ladies last week that did the um, Trees on Parade, the, the total was over $1,000 that they made. Praise be to God for that. And this is exciting. The Christmas tree they decorated won second place in its category. That's pretty cool, isn't it? It was beautiful if you happen to, happen to see it. Just a reminder that we have our midweek worship services here where there's a, I think we're having chili. Are we having chili again? It's delicious and there's a lot left over. So chili at six o'clock on Wednesday followed by our midweek Advent service at seven. And then uh, I, haven't, I haven't heard anything yet from U.S. Customs and Immigration about the Burtnick family. We're still waiting on their visas to be approved so they can come here. But I did apply for and we have received a grant from the LCMS um, Human Care Department for $5,500 to help us with that project. Isn't that a blessing from the Lord? Thank you, Lord. Any other announcements to be made today? Stan. Yeah, I just want to thank everybody for the prayers last week. Yeah, we thank God that he answered those prayers and that you're here with us today. Praise the Lord. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.